Leaders of West Asian nations, Lebanon and Israel, have signed a landmark US-brokered agreement on their maritime boundary. The historic deal marks a diplomatic feat and is a departure from decades of hostility, opening the way to offshore energy exploration. Lebanese President Michael Aoun signed a letter approving the deal in Bada, followed by Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid's signature in Jerusalem. The handover ceremony will take place at a UN peacekeeping base uh, in Nakara along the border. In a statement, Yair Lapid said, and I quote, It is not every day that an enemy country recognises the state of Israel in view of the international community. Ayun, however, played down any wider breakthrough and said in a statement that the deal has no political dimensions or impacts. That contradicts Lebanon's foreign policy. Though the two nations technically remain at war, the Israeli Prime Minister hailed the deal as a tremendous achievement and Lebanese negotiator Elias Boussab said that the deal marks the beginning of a new era between the two sides. The accord removes one source of potential conflict between Israel and Iranian-backed Lebanese group Hezbollah, and it could help alleviate Lebanon's economic crisis. The deal also comes at a time when elections are due in both Israel and Lebanon. The US envoy who mediated the negotiations said that he expects the agreement to hold even amid changes in leadership in both nations. While Lebanon and Israel have both voiced satisfaction with having settled a dispute peacefully. Prospects for a wider diplomatic breakthrough appear remote, though. For more on this, Okay, first of all, we'll cross to our guest on this, who is the uh, coordinator of the Takadon political party. He joins us live from Beirut in Lebanon. Thank you so much for joining us. Is this deal likely to hold even with these changes in leadership that could come? Uh, yes, definitely. On the Lebanese side, uh, there is uh, uh, no intention to uh, undo uh, the deal that has been signed between Lebanon and Israel and brokered by the U.S. Uh, administration. And what we're hearing on the Israeli side, that the U.S. has guarantees that this deal will hold on even if there is a change in leadership in Israel. What other prospects? Are there any prospects that this could lead to a wider diplomatic breakthrough between the two countries, given the history? Uh, look, uh, the Lebanese government was very clear that this is only a deal to unlock the potentials of the resources, of the offshore resources, oil and gas mainly, and it has nothing to do beyond uh, that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, today there is a delimitation of maritime borders between Israel that is not recognized by Lebanon and the Lebanese government. And therefore, it's up to anyone to decide if this is recognition or not of the Israelis. But there is a deal today that, delimit a day that does that delimitation between Lebanon uh, and Israel. And I think uh, going forward, if Lebanon is serious about unlocking this potential of resources, it will be faced with important questions and important investment questions about like these resources. If these resources exist in Lebanon, how to market it, where to market it, how to sell it, and what kind of infrastructure to be used. And if the companies would say that the only infrastructures are the one existing in the Eastern Mediterranean, and therefore where Israel is present, so then the Lebanese government needs to decide if it wants to join the regional pl uh, platform set up or it wants to go solo. And if it wants to go solo, maybe it would be very difficult to invest in these projects. And therefore, I think going, going forward, there will be some kind of forced normalization because of the realities of the oil and gas business. That, that leads me to my next question. What kind of impact do you think this could have economically? Do you see it as all positive? 
Uh, look, all positive. It's uh, it's uh, too much to say all positive. You know that this political class, the same political class, was the source of the uh, economic collapse in the country and the financial collapse of the country because of entrenched corruption in the system and the institutions. Today, you have the state capture. You have of corrupt people running the country institutionally. We have we are weak. Rule of law is non-existent. All of that is impossible to for oil and gas to bring any kind of prosperity. There are uh, there are huge uh, challenges and there are red flags and there are risks of uh, of that oil and gas benefit would what would not benefit the people of the country. So I think uh, maybe maybe this is the right uh, right step. Uh, forward, but I think at the same time the Lebanese population need to pressure the Lebanese authorities to do the uh, reforms that are required to build back the institution, uh, to free the, the, the institutions and the public administration from corruption, and to really uh, move on with uh, a good management of the sector and the institutions so that they would see the benefits. So, so there's a huge task on the shoulders of the Lebanese population to hold the political class accountable. Laurie Haytan in uh, Beirut, thank you so much for your analysis. Uh, let's now go to our report from uh, Gardi Francis. For Lebanon, the country I'm currently standing in, Thursday, 27th October 2022 will be marked as the beginning of a new era. This is what Lies Boussab the deputy speaker of the parliament, the head Lebanese negotiator, had to say earlier at the presidential palace, right after the Lebanese president Michel Aoun signed the letter that agrees on a landmark U.S. brokered deal between Lebanon and Israel. Now, the maritime border dispute has been going on for decades. These two countries don't recognize each other. This is why the deal has been touted as historic. Now, there's a lot at stake, billions of dollars in oil and gas. But the question is, for a country in political void, like Lebanon, where the presidency has a vague future, the government has a vague future, who'd actually implement this deal and actually help Lebanon benefit from it? The question is for the future to answer. Until then, we'll be reporting from Beirut, Radi Francis for Weon, World is One.